This is a story from Natalie Babbitt's The Devil's Other Storybook. It's called Simple Sentences. One afternoon in hell, the devil was napping in his throne room when a frightful hubbub in the hall outside brought him upright on the instant. Now what? he barked. Can't I get a minute's peace? The door to the throne room opened, and a minor demon stuck his head in. Sorry, said the minor demon, but we've got two new arrivals here, and they're giving me fits with their entry forms. Show them in, said the devil darkly. I'll straighten them out. So the minor demon brought in the two and stood them before the devil, where the first one, a shabby, mean-looking rascal, dropped his jaw and said, Well, I'll be sugared if it ain't old Scratch himself. And the second, a long-nosed gentleman, opened his eyes wide and said, Dear me, it's Lucifer. Now, the devil isn't fond of fancy names like Lucifer, preferring simply to be called the devil, or once in a while, your highness. And he certainly dislikes all disrespectful terms, of which old scratch is only one. So he scowled at the two who stood there and said, See here! I like things peaceful in hell. We can't have all this rattle and disruption. At which the two said, both at once, But, but, hold on for half a second, can't you? said the devil testily. He turned to the minor demon. What have you got on the pair of them so far? he demanded. The minor demon consulted the sheaf of papers he'd brought in with him. This one, he said, pointing with his pencil to the rascal, is in for picking pockets. And that one, pointing to the long-nosed gentleman, is down for the sin of pride and for writing books no one could understand. Well, said the devil, that sounds all right. What's the matter with that? But it's not a question of their sins, said the minor demon. We've known about those for years. What it is is what happened up there that finished them off, don't you know? And I can't get their stories straight on that. Oh, said the devil. All right. And he turned to the two who'd been waiting there, glaring at each other. You, he said to the rascal, what's your story? All I know is, said the rascal in a whiny voice, I was minding my own business out on the public streets when this lardy dardy lamps me and commences screeching fit to blast your ears. Thinks I, this cove is off his jump. So I do a bunk. But he shags me, and we both come a cropper in the gutter and sap our noodles and, well, that pins the basket. Next thing I know, I'm standing here ram and over at the knees, and he's coming the ugly like I'm the party responsible. What? said the devil. If I may be permitted, sniffed the long-nosed gentleman, what actually transpired is that this squalid and depraved illiterate was on the verge of appropriating my purse when I observed the action at the penultimate moment and whilst I was attempting to apprehend him, we both seemed to have stumbled on a curbstone, with resultant fractures and contusions, and I find I've been deprived of my life and my hat, in a most abrupt and inconvenient fashion. Surely I can't be censured for reacting with extreme exasperation. What? said the devil. I think what they mean is, began the minor demon. I know what they mean, said the devil. That one tried to pick this one's pocket. Just write it down like that. Chalk your pull there, cried the rascal. You've got it in the wrong box. Maybe I was on the filch, sure. That's my job. But I wasn't after this poor mucked out bare bones. Not for toffee. I know his type. More squeak than wool you can stand on me for that. 
A barber's cat like him ain't never got a chink into his name. Why, I'd go home by biggest bush if I couldn't pick better than that. What? said the devil. He means... The minor demon tried again. I know what he means, said the devil. He means he didn't try to pick the other one's pocket. A misunderstanding. So write it down like that. Oh, now, really, exclaimed the long-nosed gentleman. I must protest. I tell you, I saw this felon's grubby hand reaching for my purse. I am not in the habit of misinterpreting evidence supplied by my own observations. Why, the meanest intelligence could easily discern that the fellow's a thoroughgoing prevaricator. See what I mean, said the minor demon to the devil. I see, said the devil. The rascal stepped a little nearer to the devil. Look here, Your Honor, he said. I don't want to tread the shoe or I and chance you getting magged. But it's above my bend how a chap with your quick parts could hang in the hedge when it comes to separate between brass tacks and flim-flam. I mean, this underdone swellhead could argue the leg off an iron pot, but it's still all fly-trap. Take it from me. The long-nosed gentleman stepped forward then himself. I'm cognizant of the fact, he said haughtily, that I'm not, by any stretch of the imagination, in paradise. And it may be that I am naive to expect impartiality. All I can do is to iterate the unembellished fact that I observed what I observed, and what I observed was that this clumsy brigand tried to rob me. The rascal narrowed his eyes. Handsomely over the bricks there, Puggy, he said in a threatening tone. Clumsy, am I? Just because you've got your head full of bees, that's no reason to draw the long bow. You never twigged me doing my kind of work. Even if I was on the dip with a piker like you, you wouldn't twig me. When it comes to light fingers, I'm the top Mahatma. No one ever twigs me. So play Tom Tell Truth or else keep sloom. The long-nosed gentleman's face turned very red. Sir, he said in a strangled voice, you're imp Impertinence is beyond all sufferance. I wouldn't dignify your statements with rebuttals if it weren't that I have such a respect for veracity. And the plain, unvarnished truth is, you attempted to commit a felony. The devil clapped his hands with a sound like a pistol going off. That's enough, he said. I've heard enough. The plain, unvarnished truth is that there's only one crime here. Neither of you can speak a simple sentence. And at this, they both stopped short to gape at him, and both said, Wh What? The devil turned to the minor demon. Write down, he said, that what happened was they both tripped over their tongues. The minor demon nodded. Very well, and what shall I put for their punishment? For the first time, the devil smiled. We'll put them in together. In a room designed for one, he said, and there they'll stay till it all freezes over down here. So the two were led away, both sputtering with shock, and the minor demon folded up his papers. I do admire that punishment, he said to the devil. Thank you, said the devil, settling back to get on with his nap. It was the simplest sentence I could think of.